Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to Two Toe Tags Metal Reviews and today we're going to be reviewing the newest album from Ice Nine Kills titled Welcome to Horrorwood, The Silver Screen 2. So we've listened to this album non-stop for entire, the entire week and I'm shocked as to how much I enjoyed this album. Now, when we checked out the new releases of last week, I didn't really get a chance to listen to it and I know you did. But I did throw on a song or two here and there and got a general idea as to what it sounded like and I thought it was not so bad. But as I listened throughout the week, it really grew on me. But I think I'm going to start, I guess, talking my experience by addressing the elephant in the room. And that elephant is what I like to call Assault and Battery. Okay. That song, I'm just going to say, just sucks. I hate that song. <laughs> and here's why. This song, I feel like, is... A really good example of what I was worried about this album being. A very kind of try hard, like, we're edgy, get it? Oh, you know? Yeah. A little too in your face. It's just too much cheese in that song. And it does a few things on the album that, it does a few things that bug me that isn't even anywhere else in the album. For example, it's got like, you know, an interlude at the beginning of the track. No other song does that. And the only other time you see that in the album is the opening track, which is just that. You know, okay. you don't. You can get into the title track and not have to hear opening night, you know? So it's stuff like that. Now, even then, there is some interesting stuff in the song, but I don't think it justifies it enough for me to really listen to it much, so I was just skipping it every time <laughs> for the most part. Interesting. What, what, did, what did you think of that song? I, I know you had uh, a few issues with it before. I did. Um, I think they have some pretty corny ideas. Um, for that song and you know what it's like the whole cob of corn. It's like they really corn it out with the whole um, Creepy doll kind of vibe they keep putting in there It's my least favorite song on the album, but I don't hate it I learned to kind of enjoy the fact that it's meant to be fun and it's meant to be it's meant to be a joke And I kind of embraced that listening to it. So I was able to kind of forgive it um, But yeah, it is my least favorite song on the album. So it's like it does it does hold the record back in a sense that way. One thing that the song does, which is actually pretty cool, which is a testament to the rest of the album, is that it references the Toys R Us theme song, mm -hmm. which I think is extremely creative. And that is one of the biggest things about this album is its creativity. Oh, yeah. You see so many different and interesting ideas and references and concepts in all these songs, and they're all different. And it's all really clever. For example, in Hip To Be Scared, they literally do the axe scene from American Psycho, like straight up. Oh, they parody it. They, like they parody it, and it was, I'm pretty sure this was the first single of the album with a video, and they do the scene as well. Yeah. And I just, when I first heard it, like I was laughing, like wow, they're really just, you know. Well, just the song title alone, Hip To Be Scared, is a parody yeah, of Hip to, Be Square. Hip To Be Square, which is the song that Patrick Bateman plays during that scene in the movie. So, uh, yeah, it's like a double parody, yeah. and they execute it well. And, yeah, when he yells, hey, Paul, it's bam, right in the breakdown. Dude, and I love that the breakdown itself is over the same kind of rhythmic structure of that part of Hip To Be Square. Yeah. So that's just a good example of how creative and interesting this album can be. Before we move on from that, that's actually a trend on this album, um, referencing the movie, because all these songs are based on movies, referencing the movie right before the breakdown. It happened in several other songs. For example, in Ex Mortis, he goes, swallow this, which is one of Ash's yep. lines from Evil Dead before the breakdown. And and in Assault and Batteries, um, the voodoo spell, which is from Chucky, is said right before the breakdown kicks in in that song, too. And on top of that, you also have the shower scene, which has, you know, the kind of the creeping noises from yeah. the shower scene in Psycho. Psycho yeah. So that's another really cool thing that they have there. Yeah. And um, as for my favorite tracks, I want to say the number one for me is Rainy Day. Every single time that song came on, I was singing along. I just love just the grooves in this song. I love the melody. It just got in my ear, would not get out, and I was happy with that. I just loved it. And I, I kind of found that to be a trend on this album. That it's, There's a lot of catchy hooks. It's one of those albums that kind of just sits in your ear. But I find like a lot of them are, are fun. I, I find overall this album was very fun to listen to. Okay, let's keep talking about Rainy Day for a minute. So, all these songs are based off of movies. Yes. Or movies specifically. Or in that vein of genre. Um, TV Fish looked them up, so he knows what they all are. I didn't look them up, I tried to figure them all out on my own. 
Rainy day is what I couldn't quite get, but don't tell me. I'll, I have some okay. guesses, but I'm, I'm probably way off. And if you tell me what it is and it's something obvious, I'm going to kick myself because <laughs> I struggled all week trying to figure out what this is. So I listened to the lyrics and it seems like it's about gaming. It seems like it's about video games or something like that. So I'm trying to think of movies, horror movies that are kind of about a video game. Um, I couldn't really think of any, so I thought of movies, video game that are movies like Resident Evil, Silent Hill, Doom, and then something started making my mind go a little further, and then there's this one line where he says, game over, you died, and I'm thinking about Dark Souls, because like on the screen after you die, so Dark Souls came to my head. There is no Dark Souls movie though. There isn't, but I just thought maybe, they, did a, like... maybe they wrote a song about a game or something, maybe, I don't know, I was like, I was, I was lost. Um, so I looked up the lyrics, I'm reading through them, okay, yeah, this, that, blah, 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 controller, soldier, blah, 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 like, it's all gaming related. Um, but There Goes the Neighborhood was a line, and that is a movie, but it's not necessarily a horror movie. Um, I looked that up, it's a heist movie from the 90s. Um, so I, I don't know, I'm lost on Rainy Day, what well, was it? Well, on a rainy day, you typically want to open up your umbrella. Okay. Perhaps related to the Umbrella Corporation. Was Resident Evil? So it's Resident Evil. It is Resident Evil. Okay. So you, you were on the ball with that one. Yeah, so I well, I was one of my guesses, but it just seemed weird because it's it's a video game made into I don't know, it was it, it felt a little different than the rest of them. Um, I skimmed through the lyrics of that one. I'm pretty sure they do mention zombies and they do mention Umbrella, obviously Umbrella Corp. So did they mention Umbrella? It, it, I'm hmm. pretty sure. Maybe. I'm not I like I said, I skimmed it, so I don't know for sure. Yeah. But yeah, I could tell that one was probably a little bit tough just because it is a video game movie. They do meant like kind of reference gaming because it is based on a game. Okay, well there was one more that I couldn't get. Actually, two more technically. Does is does Welcome to Horror War, Horror War, the first track have a reference? It does not. Okay, so I didn't get that one, and I'm glad because there, I, 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 I had no guess. Yeah, yeah, there's, yeah there's nothing. There. The other one that I'm there's actually two more that I'm kind of unsure about. One I'm pretty sure. So the one I'm pretty sure about is um, Worst Vacation. I'm pretty sure it's Hostel. Yeah. Okay, cool. That's correct. Um, and then FLY, Fly. Is it the Fly? Yes. Okay, makes sense. <laughs> makes sense. Um, but one really cool thing about that song, when we talk about creativity and things that, you know, you put different ideas into songs and make your song sound diverse and sound full and stuff like that. In this one, they have a choir saying the line, uh, I'm not saying I'm not playing God. And the, the way they do you know the part I'm talking about? I think I'd have to hear it again. It's the coolest part of the song. I fucking love it. Um, but yeah, they just throw a choir in saying that line, and it happens a few times. Um, but just the the rhythmic pattern, the vocal phrasing, and how they say it is really, really cool. Um, but yeah, the fly, cool. Um, just so you guys know the rest of them, and, and you can correct me if I am wrong about any of these, but I'm pretty sure about them. Farewell to Flesh is Candyman, Assault and Batteries is Chucky, the shower scene is Psycho, the box is Hellraiser. Um, Ex Mortis is Evil Dead, Rash Decisions, oh this is another one, Cabin Fever? Yes! yes. Well done! Cabin Fever. Um, Funeral Derangements, Pet Cemetery. Um, Hip to be Scared is American Psycho, and Take Your Pick is My Bloody Valentine. Well done! That's how you know someone's a horror movie buff, if you can get them all. Like, yeah. That's impressive, especially well, I got considering... them all except Rainy Day. Rainy Day was a guess. I got, I got Resident Evil, yeah. but it was a guess. So. You still did essentially get it. Your mind was in the right spot. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, that's another thing that's interesting. If you consider the first Silver Scream, which I know you didn't check out, I, I did, did for a reference point. Mm -hmm. They really did all, like, the big heavy hitters on that one in terms of yeah. movie content. So they kind of, like, I guess we're reaching a little bit more with this one. It got a little bit more niche, I would say. Yeah, but that's okay. But, I... then, you know, that's fine. Yeah. That's totally fine. And regarding the first Silver Scream... Honestly, this album is a direct upgrade from the first one. That's just the general, like after I listened to that, I kind of thought, you know, the second one does everything the first one does, but just does it better. The first yeah. one felt a little bit repetitive and it's a little bit more try hard. This one felt a little bit less try hard and was just more creative and interesting. Yeah, yeah, I decided not to listen to the other record because I didn't want to, you know, kind of have that influence my opinion of this one. So I just stuck with this one. I will listen to it when I get a chance, but for now I just listen to this one. Um, talk about lyrics a little bit. We've already mentioned a few lyrical things, but I was actually really impressed with the lyrics on this album. Very creative stuff. Um, Farewell to Flesh, for example. Uh, you're hooked on me forever, my queen bee and me together. So there's a play on words there because Candyman has a hook. Then there's the whole thing about the bees. And it's sing he's singing it like it's a love song. Um, just, I like those play on words kind of thing. Speaking um, of Queen Bee, like, they do Flight of the Bumblebee, like, they reference that in that song as well. Yeah. Like, musically, so, it ties in. Also, um, Funeral Derangements, um... Love that when song. When they say, sometimes dead is better, that's just really cool, it's a cool oh. line. 
but um, they, like he, they're talking about you know digging graves and stuff like that, and he says when push comes to shovel, it's not when oh, push comes to shove, shit, it's push comes that. to shovel, which I thought was so genius, obviously because you know one thing leads to another, you can escalate something to the point where oh something's dead, now I gotta dig a grave for them, but it's just really cool. Awesome play on words there. Yeah, that one is probably another one of my like top favorites. Like right behind Rainy Day, it's got to be that one. Let's so, talk about Take Your Pick. So that one's interesting. First of all, it's the only one without a clean hook, mm -hmm. which is really cool that they just have that. It makes it interesting by then. Um, a lot of samples are going on in that one, which I don't know how I feel about that because I don't mind it because Corpse Grinder sounds awesome on this song. Corpse Grinder does sound awesome. You know what? There's a really cool vocal dynamic because... Um, Spencer is doing two different voices. One of them's like a really weird, deranged kind of like mm -hmm. sick voice, and the other one's kind of his normal kind of whatever voice. Um, but the dynamic between the the three with Corpse Grinder is really cool. It's almost like a very it's a very uh, white and black kind of um, contrasty type of sound, and it fits very well. It's a cool song. One of the best yeah. songs on the album is, is Take Your Pick. I was sure. really liking that one as well. It's 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 one of the harder ones, like the mo one of the most brutal ones on the album, I would say. All right, well, I don't know. you want to rate it? I guess so. So I think Welcome to Horrorwood, The Silver Scream, number two, is a great album. I'm surprised I enjoyed it as much as I did, but it's really catchy. It's really fun. Obviously, don't take it too overly seriously, but there's a lot of really clever ideas lyrically musically just overall very well rounded it gets my toe tag yeah this is one of those times where i'm actually kind of glad i'm wrong because going into this week at the very beginning i was like eh, this album's not gonna be for me i don't like the clean singing and the whole hokiness and blah 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 that turned around to me so fast dude and this is it's been a long time i don't even remember the last time where i put more than half of an album in my playlist this went i was just adding songs adding oh. songs adding songs and because they're so fun. I'm singing along with them. I'm singing them when I'm not listening to the album. Gets my toe tag as well. I am shocked but not shocked because I wasn't expecting this at all. This was a big turnaround for me because I expected this to maybe get like a six or something. No, this is a fucking great album. And that's why Don't we do sleep what we do. It. That yes. is why we do what we do. We listen to the album for the entire week to see how we truly feel. Yep. And we truly feel it's a two toe tag album. So it's going to go on our list of albums as we received two toe tags. One from each of us. And that's all we got for you guys today. So remember to like the video if you like it. Comment tell us in the comments below. What do you think of this album? What do you think of it compared to the first Silver Screen? Which one do you like better? We always love to hear what you guys have to say. I'm TV Fish. I'm Bile Self. We'll see you guys later.